Okay, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on a Saturday, as always. Uh, and uh, we're coming to, I think, uh, the tail end of this year in terms of uh, uh, our calendar, but it's still November it remains a very, very important month. And in this extension of the SK Dharma Lingam Lecture Series, uh, this morning, we're going to talk about prostate cancer in line with Male Cancer Awareness Month, or as most of us now more popularly know it, uh, Movember. So in line with this, I think one of the big cancers that really uh, we are very concerned about is prostate cancer. And in terms of prostate cancer, we're still looking at early detection. We're still looking at picking patients up, uh, you know, when, when, uh, when uh, they present early, but the, there needs to be a kind of a lot of understanding around this as well. Some people are very confused and uh, we, we just need to get better connected to our patients in terms of discussing with them what this early prostate cancer will mean. And which is why really uh, this, this uh, session, we're focusing on this term, which we always listen to and hear about called the watchful wait. What does it mean in prostate cancer? We're very honored and privileged this morning to be able to have with us Professor Dr. Ong Teng Ek. Uh, Professor Ong is, uh, again, I don't think he's a household name. I don't think uh, there's anyone that needs introduction to Prof Ong, but just in case you are tuning in as an international audience uh, this morning, please allow me to introduce Prof Ong to you. Prof, Prof Ong is a consultant neurologist uh, from University of Malaya Medical Center. And currently, Prof Ong is also the president of the Malaysian Urological Association. Prof Ong works very closely with prostate cancer patients and actually is very actively involved in a lot of survivorship work as well. So um, please allow me to thank all, uh, on behalf of all of you, Prof Ong. Good morning, Prof. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, very, very uh, excited to listen uh, to your insights to us. So without further ado, please allow me to kind of turn the session over to you. And then uh, once you're done with the first half, we can take a, take a break and, and uh, take some questions, Prof. Please, yeah. gentlemen, feel free to leave your questions onto the chat box so that Prof can, we can, we can go through with them yeah. Yeah. Uh, as, as Prof covers his slides. Prof, yeah. over to you. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks, thanks, Dr. Murali, and thank you everybody for uh, dialing in. Huh? Huh? Great privilege huh? for, for me to be able to uh, speak here today. So I will uh, go through the uh, topic today. But of course, huh, uh, Dr. Murali can uh, interject. Huh? If you think something relevant, huh? what to ask, can. Huh? Uh, then, then we just go along there. Don't have to wait until at the end again. <laughs> you know, uh, so I, 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 I will just move on to that. Huh? Uh, so I'll just share the information here. <coughs> I have it here here and then <coughs> okay so uh yeah uh thanks huh, for this is series 16 already yeah you work very hard now very hard so this uh series 16 uh, uh the uh, sk damalingam lecture series huh? so well done huh, to uh, national cancer society of malaysia so the topic today uh, is watchful wait you know we the urologists will say watchful waiting uh, uh, waiting uh, what does it mean uh? I think important, you know, that, that we know, you know, always we want to be able to uh, aggressive and uh, do this, do that. Uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, is there, is there a role uh, of us? Uh, uh, just wait and see. Uh, just wait and see. Uh, so the topic today uh, cover like four sub-segments, uh, uh, like uh, understanding early, uh, early. Uh, we're talking about early to today, you know, we're not talking about late, uh, late uh, cancer. Uh, those have been, uh, you know, uh, uh, will be a topic for another talk, uh, uh, or, uh, or many other talks have been uh, uh, conducted earlier uh, uh, in various uh, occasions. Uh. Then understanding the watchful wait, uh, or watchful waiting, uh, we understand that. Uh, so you can teach your friend, uh, you know, oh, I know about this thing. Uh, and treatment of for early prostate cancer. Huh? Uh, the aim is that now, you know, everyone become expert. So when your friend asks you something, your family member asks you something, your neighbor asks you something, you know, then, then, then you understand. Or, or, or Dr. Murali uh, 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 tell, uh, advise you or something, uh, or some uh, you know, piece of advice, uh, then we will understand the context. Uh? So everyone will be an expert uh, uh, or near expert at the end of today, uh, after one hour like that. Uh? So within 60 minutes, you know, we're going to be expert. Uh? Uh. 
and the challenges uh, in the management of early uh, prostate cancer. Uh. So we know the challenges. Uh. It's not so simple, you know. Uh. Uh, you got this, you will do this. You get it, you do that. You know, it's not so simple sometimes. Uh. Uh. Okay, we will tell you the nuance of it. Uh. Okay, so uh, acknowledgement and uh, thank the National Cancer Society in Malaysia uh, for giving uh, me this uh, opportunity uh, to share. Introduce uh introduction about myself lah huh? uh, okay I I'm I'm from KL one I'm born and bred in KL lah huh? I attended school everything lah in KL university also KL one lah huh? uh, then after finish medical school uh then I moved to Sabah Sabah you know so been about almost five years lah four or five years there huh? pusing pusing has been to Sandakan has been to KK. Uh, then I moved to Sarawak, uh, Sarawak, you know, uh, mainly uh, in uh, University Malaysia Sarawak, you know, which uh, the short form is uh, Unimas, uh, uh, lecturer there in Unimas, uh, around about 10 years, you know, about 10 years. Uh. Then I, the end, I, 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 I go home, uh, come back home uh, in 2010, uh, 2010. Uh, so it's a big round, uh, pushing, then uh, come back, uh, come back to KL. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so it's 11 years lah of me uh, coming back to University of Malaya. Lah, huh? mm. So undergraduate, postgrad, and then balik also lah, come back to work in the same place. Lah. Mm. So uh, we, we will now uh, you know, go to the uh, topic. Uh. Uh, I think it's good that we have some background information. Uh, so we are synchronized. You know, uh, the prostate cancer, and it, it can look very simple. Like on the survey, very simple one, you know, in the, even undergraduate day, you know, even for people not so smart as me also, I understand. I thought I, I, thought I understand. I thought I understand. Huh? But if you explore, it, it could be a very deep one, you know, one layer after one layer after one layer. It, it could be quite complex one. It could be quite complex. Huh? So when you go to very deep details huh, of individual patient, individual scenario, it, it could be quite uh, uh, challenging. Uh, so what we need to do today uh, is to demystify it and uh, make it simple uh, and practical. Uh. Okay, uh, important that if a friend asks you where the prostate is, uh, is it good that we know? Lah. A lot actually when I finish medical school, so sometimes I at that time also I quite not so clear also sometimes. So it's uh, even though uh, you look at this slide, lah, uh, even though this uh, you know uh, look very simple, but it's Important that we know what happened. Huh? I'm sure you can see the arrow. I'm using the arrow. I think you can see it. You know, so this is a cross section. We're looking at the male organ from the side way, lah, huh? From the side way, huh? uh, You see, uh, this is the the arrow showing the bladder. Huh? You see the bladder, huh? uh, and then below the bladder is the prostate. Is the, that is the prostate. Uh, then that is the urethra, lah, the urine tract, lah, where the urine flow through, cross the prostate, go through the penal urethra, and then the urine got uh, discharged out lah, uh, from the bladder. Uh, so that is the whole urethra. Quite long, you know, about <laughs> I think uh, 15 cm or so. Yeah, yeah, quite, quite long, quite long. Uh, uh, and below the bladder is the prostate. That is the prostate. Uh, and, uh, and behind the prostate, uh, we look at the belakang, lah, behind, what is behind the prostate? The behind the prostate is the rectum, you know, the large bowel. There's the large bowel. Oh, the large bowel. Just, just very close, just separated by a layer of fat, you know. And in front of the prostate, what's in front of the prostate? Ah, that's this piece of bone, the pubic bone. If you feel your tummy and you feel something hard, man, ah, that's the bone. That's a piece of bone. That's not cancer. Some people thought it's the cancer. It's not. It's a piece of bone. Nah? We have a piece of bone nah, that cover the prostate, man. So meaning the prostate from front, you cannot feel one, you know. From front, no matter how I press my tummy, nah, I cannot feel the prostate one. Even world record, nah, the biggest prostate in the world, so I cannot be fed one nah, from the front. If we examine from the front, you cannot feel. And they come from the back one, later we will show. Nah, nah, nah. From front, no way. From front, no way. Nah, nah. So that's the prostate. Nah. And then one more important thing to look at nah, uh, is the... You know, you look at the prostate here. I'm drawing the prostate here. Huh? If, you, if you can see the arrow, I think the arrow is moving. You know, I think you can see it. Huh? You cannot let me know. Huh? Okay. So the arrow here, that's a prostate. And this, you look at this red ma muscle here, this thin strand of muscle. That's the sphincter. That's where they control the urination. Buka, tutup, buka, tutup. That's where the sphincter is. That's where the sphincter is. That's where the sphincter is, which is important. Huh? If the patient undergoes surgery or so on. Huh? So that sphincter function is very important. Huh? If that sphincter function is affected, the patient will have urinary incontinence. Huh? They will leak urine. Huh? They might need diapers. Huh? 
So this sphincter function is very important. Right? It's to be preserved right? at, uh, uh, at, uh, at whatever cost, huh? if you can. Huh? So that is the prostate, it's a male organ, and only uh, 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 you know, exists huh? in male. Huh? Female don't have a prostate, huh? female don't have one. Huh? I think never, never heard of one also. Huh? Okay, next, huh? the practical point. Practical point. When you see the patient every day, you know, how, how do they come to us? Huh? Uh, this is a picture I took when I was in Sarawak lah, uh, more than 10 years ago. There's uh, that clinic and uh, now more people look more modern than, than those days. Lah. A few called a uh, clinic connected one uh, those days uh, in Sarawak General Hospital in Kuching. Eh? Okay, so normally they will bring a blood test result. Lah, huh? A lot of time maybe eh, you do a blood test, PSA test, you know, and it's uh, high, then patient come and consult us. Huh? Uh, oh, I'm sure the audience here, uh, we have some uh, doctors here as well. Huh? Uh, so they will come and consult us, you know. Uh, that is the problem that the we have to solve. We have to solve. Huh? That's our responsibility, lah, my responsibility, Dr. Morali's uh, responsibility, and all the doctors huh, in the audience here today. Huh? So you check the report, you know, it could be high, it could be low. Huh? Uh, for example, this one's six. Huh? Uh, the, 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 the unit is a nanogram per deciliter or you know, some other unit, but not really quite, quite consistent. Huh? Uh, so the normal way they say below four, lah, below four. Uh, this one's six, huh? slightly high, slightly high. Huh? Uh, so what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Huh? Oh. So prostate specific antigen is kind of a is, is a pro protein. Uh, it is uh, you know chemical uh, produced by the prostate specifically one. You know, only the prostate. Uh, uh, only the prostate produce PSA. No, that, that, that's the special thing about that. You know. and no other organ produce this uh, uh, chemical one, uh, PSA. No, no other, no, no other, uh, no other. Liver, lung, or bowel, they don't produce that. Huh? So it's very specific to the prostate one. You know? That's a good point about that. Huh? That's a good point about that. Huh? So when the PSA is abnormal, huh? then something is happening to the prostate. It uh, cannot be something happening to the lung, then the PSA become raised, something happening to the liver, PSA become raised. It never happened like that. So if the PSA become abnormal, high or what, uh, something peculiar is happening to the prostate. Uh, so make life uh, slightly easier. Lah. Uh, so our brain zoom down uh, to the prostate. What's wrong with the prostate? Uh, uh, so that 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 is how we think. That's got go through our mind. Uh, our mind uh, uh. Okay, what causes the PSA to rise? Uh, uh, no, uh, that, that, that's important thing. That's important thing. So we will tell you the answer today. So all of us uh, here become expert uh, today. Uh. There are many causes for raised PSA one. You know, you can list maybe at least about six to ten causes uh, for the raised PSA, but we highlight three, uh, three most important ones. Uh, okay, three most important, three. Uh, okay, the three most important one is this here, uh, uh, listed here. Number one, benign prostatic hyperplasia, uh, BPH. Uh, BPH, uh, uh, good to remember the name. Uh, uh, sounds like the petrol station, uh, but the one is BHP. Uh, this is BPH. Uh, so, you know, you need to kind of, you know, uh, 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 memorize this term. Uh, huh? Next one is the patient have urinary tract infection. Uh, then the PSA will be higher also. Huh? Mm. Then, of course, number three uh, that we are concerned about is that uh, PSA will be raised uh, many a times uh, if the patient has uh, prostate cancer. Uh, so, the job for us is to tell which is which one. Uh, uh, so, my job, Murali's job uh, is to tell which one is which one. Of course, luckily, la, most of the time, PSA raise is number one due to the benign enlargement. Ah, so, you know, that, that, that is the most common cause la, huh? instead of prostate cancer. Huh? Ah, so, but our job is to rule out uh, prostate cancer, huh? make sure there's no dangerous prostate cancer lurking around the corner. Huh? So after that, you know, uh, we will ask more history, like how old the patient, any other medical problem, any lower urinary tract symptom, meaning having difficulty in passing urine, you know, or having frequency uh, of urination and so on. Uh. We also ask about family history, you know, whether any family history of prostate cancer and so on, uh, because some patients have family history, you see, uh, so we have to be pay more attention to that, uh, because some uh, of the prostate cancer is uh, uh, heavy data reader. And after that, uh, we don't stop there. We don't stop there. Huh? Uh, the, the, the doctor will have to do the examination. Huh? Uh, we have to learn the art of examination. Huh? 
you will check the abdomen and right? make sure the bladder is not distended and all that. Now, we don't, the abdomen we press from the front, we can't feel the prostate. We just feel the abdomen, make sure the bladder and you know, all that not not distended and so on. Then we check the genitalia, the penis, the scrotum. Then we do the DRE. Then we do the DRE. This is the term you should know. Yeah, uh, We always use that term, uh, which means uh, digital rectal examination. Uh, because from front, we know there's a pubic bone there. There's a bone uh, from the front. So we have to go to the back, go to the rectum, and uh, use a digit, you know, which is a finger, to check the uh, uh, prostate. Uh, uh. Di digital that doesn't mean electronic it's digital it's, it's finger meaning finger uh, uh. okay so that's where we uh, put on the glove and then you know we check the prostate uh, uh, you know, uh, the feel the consistency of the prostate to see the surface smooth or not you know to see how big it is and all that uh. so it's kind of an art uh, we, 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 we do that you know so as a urologist uh, we do that every day you know so uh, sometimes uh, you know it's, it's, like, uh, uh, it's uh, the thing that we are used to so there's a practical trick uh, uh, it's, uh, for uh, doctors uh, in the audience uh, uh, so what we do, uh, this is a ball, uh, this is a ball. So we use our finger, uh, finger, this is my finger, uh, I took with my uh, own finger. Yeah. Finger quite precious, you know, our index finger is quite important. Uh. Uh, so that, 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 then what we do, we see whether we can get above it or not. We, they say, you know, get above. You can get above it, then prostate is small, uh, meaning your finger can touch the top part, uh, you know. Then we sweep left, right, you know, uh, like a wiper, uh, we sweep left, right. So it's more than one finger to the left and right, maybe, then maybe it's big. Lah, no? uh, so that's how we, we do it. Lah, no? uh, that, that's the art of doing a digital rectal examination and we, uh, you know, uh, uh, we will do that every day. Lah, no? Then, uh, what do we do next? Uh? After we do all that, uh, okay, PSA is ready, we get the history, we get the exam, then what do we do next? Uh? How do you deal with that? You know, raise PSA now, how do you deal with that? You know, do you refer or not to refer? Ah, so that is the, the, the thing. Eh? So just for information, the uh, prostate campaign, uh, one of the uh, campaign activity for University of Malaya here, we have recently launched eh, this platform eh, for the uh, doctor eh, in Malaysia, like, wherever, uh, dealing with a patient coming to see a prostate issue, race PSA, all that. Eh, there's this e-learning platform. Eh? Uh, later we can share eh, on prostate cancer training project. So, you know, something to, uh, very simple for the doctors to learn. Ah, PSA like that, what do I do? What do I do? You know, where, where, when should I refer? When should I not to refer? When should I uh, repeat the PSA? So, it's very uh, useful. Uh, no? uh, okay. So, once if, say, uh, the PSA is still high and we are worried about prostate cancer, the next step is that the patient will be referred to a urologist. You know? What do you do a urologist first? One? I think that, that's the first stop. Uh, after see the uh, uh, a doctor, a non urologist, say and all that, the next stop is to see a, a urologist. Uh, then the urologist will determine whether, whether there is cancer or not. So, what do they do? Uh, uh, they, they, they sometimes they're not telling you. So, the key word is the next step, uh, if, if appropriate, if appropriate, is to do a biopsy. Uh, then come the biopsy. Uh, the key word now, biopsy. Uh, remember, uh, we have to learn that term, the biopsy. And biopsy, of course, uh, there are two ways, two ways, uh, two ways, uh, uh, two main ways. Uh. Number one, uh, that is the traditional one, uh, which people still do that. It's called transrectal ultrasound guided prostate biopsy. Uh, trust, trust, this all trust, trust, trust. Uh. The urology will say that uh, trust biopsy, trust biopsy. Uh. As you can see from the picture there, uh, we go through the rectum, and because the prostate can be reached to the rectum, it's not going from the front, uh. it's going from the back, uh, like the finger, uh. it's like the finger. Uh, go to the rectum, give local anesthetic, uh, uh, so pain will be not an, an, an issue. Then we put a you know, needle uh, to take the tissue out uh, from the prostate and send for microscopic examination uh, for the histology. Uh, this is the most common way uh, at the Malaysia. Uh, we, we do that. Nowadays, of course, uh, there's another way. Uh, instead of going to the rectum, uh, they go through the skin, you know, uh, uh, you know be below the scrotum. It's called, the, the term is called TP biopsy. TP, TP, transperineal. You see the term up there, transperineal prostate biopsy. Uh, then that's another one. Uh, uh, then you have a green or something, you know, then go through the skin there and then take biopsy. Uh. So what, what is the advantage of this one? The advantage of this one, the uh, main, main thing uh, 
is that the less risk of infection, uh, less risk of infection, uh, uh, because go through the skin uh, instead of through the rectum. Uh. But of course, you have the biopsy done through the transrectal route. The doctor also will cover antibiotic also uh, uh, to cut down the risk of infection. So biopsy is the key. Uh. And after biopsy, they are sent for histological examination to look under the microscope uh, uh, to see whether they got cancer or not. Uh, must confirm, right? They look under the microscope, see you got cancer or not. Uh, so that is a key point. A key point yeah? So after that, once they know they got cancer, it's normally there's a technical term uh, called adenocarcinoma. Most common, most common. Uh, of course, the other uh, peculiar one, uh, very rare. Uh, most of them are adenocarcinoma. Then the next step, uh, the pathologist will do with the report is that they will grade the tumor. Next thing is grading. Uh, next thing, grading. So how angry, uh, how angry the cancer is. Uh? If the cancer is, they call it well differentiated, uh, meaning they look like the original normal tissue, then they are low grade. If they don't look like the original uh, prostate tissue, they are poorly differentiated, then they are high grade. Uh? So of course we prefer patient to have low grade. You know, low grade one, they, they, they move slowly. Uh. The high grade one, you know, they, they, they might be more aggressive. Huh? Now, so that's important for us to have the biopsy, confirm, oh yeah, there's cancer inside. But how angry is that cancer? How angry is it? Huh? Uh, you know, how aggressive the cancer? So that comes the next step. Huh? The next key word is the grading. Uh, the information that we have to know. Huh? Uh, your patient come, you got to then tell us, huh? uh, me, myself, or Dr. Murali, I got cancer. And then besides knowing the PSA, besides knowing that yeah, you have cancer, but what is the grade of the cancer? Yeah, that, is, that is obtained huh, through biopsy. Uh, so the most common, I mean, most common actually, everyone use that, uh, is the Gleason score. Peculiar for prostate cancer one. So it's important to know this term, Gleason score, uh, Gleason score, or Gleason grade. Uh, uh, so there's a uh, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 4, uh, up to, the worst is, uh, uh, I mean, the, the, the most serious is 5 plus 5, uh, up to number 5, uh, uh, up to number 5. There will be a number there. Uh, 5 plus 5 equal to 10, but we don't normally don't say 10. Uh, it's uh, 5 plus 5. 3 plus 3 is 6, but we normally don't say 6. We say 3 plus 3. Uh, uh, 3 plus 3 is the, uh, is the lowest grade. Uh, it's the most benign, slow kind of a cancer. Slow. Uh, uh, important to know. Uh, great, great. Then newer one uh, from 2014 uh, onward, of course the, the, the Gleason score on the left on their left hand side of the screen, they, they, they put to some uh, uh they saw Gleason grade group uh, for us, ISUP uh, grading system, grade group one, two, three, four, five. Uh, 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 grade group one is the very low grade tumor, uh, very okay one. Uh, and grade group five uh, are the one uh, more aggressive one. Uh, so the pathologies, the urologies, the oncology, they will use this uh, term nowadays. More often uh, in the report, you will see that. Not only we give the Gleason grade, 3 plus 3, 3 plus 4, whatsoever, they will also mention the ISUP, uh, uh, grade group, grade group. Uh. So that's grading. that's grading. Now we know already, you know, PSA, how much already? Oh, biopsy, already. oh, a patient have cancer. And what is the grading of it? What grade of it? Okay, so we got more information now more information now so you know so what do we do now yeah we have the diagnosis now we, we achieve that milestone we, we, we achieve that. Yeah, yeah we know already yeah. oh yeah we should have uh, a, a diagnosis we diagnose it already. we diagnose it already is that adequate uh, to cope or not uh, can we carry on from here uh, is it all done already finish yeah not yet it's not done yet no you confirm all oh, patients have uh, prostate cancer, PSA 6, uh, Gleason 3 plus 3, 3 plus 4, uh, adenocarcinoma of the prostate. It's not enough. Not enough. Mm -hmm. Why not enough? Yeah, Have to move to the next step. That will be the next step. The Almost the, 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 the final uh, in terms of diagnosis. Uh. The next critical question uh, before we manage is to know what stage the patient is in. You know? So I think you have to answer that question. Otherwise, you cannot move on. Uh. The team cannot move. It's not done yet. It's not done yet. We need to know what stage before we can even say about up to, uh, uh, what kind of treatment, watchful waiting, la, surgery, la, do this, do that. La. You know, we haven't reached that stage to say you do this or do that. We haven't reached that stage. So we need staging. Uh, staging uh. Then come another keyword, staging. Uh. So once diagnosed, next one is the staging. Uh, then, we, then we get the staging scan. Uh. Uh, depend on the case to case. 
the urologist or the oncologist or who uh, uh, or Dr. Muhammad Murali, uh, we will all order a, a, a scan, a staging scan. Uh, currently, to call, we call that conventional staging. Uh, if you order a bone scan, uh, because the prostate cancer like to spread to the bone. So most of the people will have a bone scan, bone scan, and uh, later have a CT scan on the MRI. Yeah, cross-sectional staging. So we all combination of a uh, two or three uh, scan, then we know uh, this patient is stage one, two, three, or four. Yeah, so that is the staging scan. Current standard practice, uh, that is the scan that we will do uh, so we can classify uh, the patient to uh, stage one, two, three, four. Uh, then only we can talk about the management. Huh? Uh, of course, nowadays, uh, you, you might hear about what PET scan and all that. Nah? Uh, but do, this is uh, called the next generation imaging. Nah? Huh? Uh, the guideline on this is still evolving. Uh, there's no clear answer to that, whether you should do or you should not do a PET scan at the moment. Uh, uh, of course, you want to do CAN. You know, I would say CAN. You want to do a, this, this PSMA uh, PET scan. Uh, if you, because it uh, involves some cost and uh, uh, in, in the new scanning uh, because it's quite expensive. Uh, uh, but people want to do it. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But the international guideline is still uh, yet to confirm this. Uh, uh, so this is con conventional staging, bone scan, MRI, CT scan. Uh, so with that, you know, we can talk about management. Yeah. Uh, then we talk can can start the we can activate the discussion on management already. It's time already. Uh, uh, we know the PSA, we know the grade, we know the stage. Uh, then what state is the disease now? Then we can talk management. Okay, so the management is based on the stage of the disease. Uh, 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 based on the stage of the disease. So mainly, uh, this slide is important uh, uh, for us to know the landscape. Okay, so you know, for us to know the landscape, there are mainly three, three, for urologists, oncologists, uh, number one, localized, you know, the, the, the term we use, uh, this is a technical term. So if you can use those terms when you talk to the doctors, uh, wow, it really sound, you know, it, 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 really they will pay, pay a lot of attention because they will know that you know the details of it. Uh. So I'm telling you all the jargon, you know, all this term that that, 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 that will ring a bell, you know, uh, that will resonate uh, with the urologist, urologist and the oncologist. Uh. Number one, after staging, uh, we know about localized or organ-confined prostate cancer. Huh? Localized, meaning they are in the prostate. They haven't moved to anywhere else. Huh? Everything is inside the prostate. Huh? They didn't go anywhere. Huh? It's there. You know? That's what, we actually, that's what we are talking about today. Lah. If you want to talk about watchful waiting, surveillance, nah, that's the topic today. You know? If we detect early, if more people do the screening and all that, lah, for whatever reason, and we pick up more cancer, early cancer, most likely they will be in this stage. Huh? Localized or organ-confined prostate cancer. Huh? So normally they are stage one or two. Like one or two huh? Next one, uh, this is a bit de delay already. You know, you know, we don't check and all that kind of thing. They become locally at once. You know? They spread outside the prostate, just outside the, the, the prostate. And it's not confined already. That's a lot of time in stage three already, like number three and number three. Then, of course, uh, as this metastatic disease, you know, that's the term we use, uh, metastatic disease, uh, that is stage four, meaning the cancer has spread to the bone, to the you know, distant limb node, to the lung, and so on. Uh, it's metastatic. Uh, it's stage four, like stage four. But you know, the, the, the jargon that we use for urology, they, they normally don't say stage four, they say metastatic prostate cancer, metastatic prostate cancer. That's the term they use, uh, which means it is stage four, uh, metastatic. Uh, uh. So unfortunately for Malaysia, most patients present with metastatic disease. You know? I'm sure you have heard in many other talks. Huh? Uh, so I won't show the slide here. Uh, you, 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 you are repeating being bombarded with the fact huh? that about 50% to 60% of the Malaysian patient, huh? when they first present uh, with, uh, uh, to the doctors, huh? when you do all the scanning, huh? Huh? do all the biopsy, the scanning, everything, huh? They would have been they, they would be classified under metastatic money stage four. Huh? Well, where else in the developed world like America and uh, UK and so on? Huh? Example, huh? the metastatic, you know, the you know, the upon presentation is five to ten percent only. You know? So just say like round the figure up ten percent. Huh? Where else huh? in Malaysia is fifty percent 
of the patient uh, presents uh, with metastatic disease uh, compared to 10% in the Western world. So that is the uh, discrepancy here. Uh, no? it's, it's a challenge. Yeah? Uh, I'm sure uh, we will, uh, no, we will, everyone will work to find an answer to that. Uh, to how to reduce that. Uh, no? uh, so important uh, here, uh, one, two, three, Local, uh, localized cancer, or organ confined, locally advanced, yeah? stage three or metastatic. Today, today, uh, the focus is number one, the top one, that localized or localized. So this is a picture uh, depicting the uh, stage, uh, the local stage, uh, the staging. So mainly they are one and one and two, uh, uh, as you can see, uh, the red circle there. Uh, uh, they just inside the prostate, inside the prostate. Did not go out. You see the, the three, they're already gone out. Four is uh, more advanced. Uh, uh, it encroaches on the surrounding organ, uh, bladder, uh, rectum, uh, just you know, surround the, the structure. So now, uh, today, uh, uh, we'll look on this issue uh, that is seldom touch upon. Uh, you seldom touch upon. Uh, uh, a lot of talks that we go are for metastatic stage 4 disease because there are many new drugs there. New drug, new chemo, new hormone treatments. So lots of talk on that. Uh, uh, seldom people talk on this thing. Uh, actually, it's a very important topic. Uh, uh, you know, uh, so you see, uh, it's called localized prostate cancer. What are the treatment options? Uh, treatment. So, uh, uh, okay. You guess lah, how many uh, treatment options we have. Huh? Okay, huh? I will give the answer in the next slide. Huh? There are mainly uh, four options that become the challenge. Lah. If the localized cancer have only one option, very easy. You know, uh, you have the once diagnosed huh, localized cancer, uh, you just have this option. Lah. No need to choose. You take only, uh, take this one. But cannot, you know, cannot. That become a challenge. That become a challenge. Because you have to choose which one, you know, A, B, C, D. Uh, they become a headache. Uh, become a headache for the patient. Become a headache for the doctor. Uh, myself, also a headache. Uh, Dr. Murali, also a headache. Uh, everybody a headache. Uh, options. Okay, those are technical. Uh, now the term comes out uh, that we frequently use. Uh, uh, number one. Ah, uh, they come the topic to today. Uh, the, the title of the topic. Today. Watchful waiting. Uh, uh, to just... Watch it. Later we'll explain huh, in detail. Huh? Number two, active surveillance. Huh? Uh, quite near one, you know. Watch you waiting and active surveillance. There's no surgery, no radiotherapy, not, nothing. Huh? Nobody touch you. Huh? Nobody uh, put a knife on you. Nobody use radiotherapy to zap you and all that. Huh? Uh, so active surveillance. All these are valid options, you know, valid one. You know? Next one, of course, huh? is surgery. Huh? Surgery. When we talk about surgery, uh, we say it's a radical prostatectomy. Uh, that, 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 that's the term. Uh, how you do it is a different way. But the surgery is called radical prostatectomy. Uh, quite hard to pronounce. When I was young, I can hardly pronounce this term. Yeah. Then uh, there's a radiotherapy. Radiotherapy. Most commonly used is external beam. Uh, external beam. When the beam comes from outside and shine on the prostate. Later, we have a diagram on that. Yeah, and also brachytherapy huh, when they put seed into the prostate. That's less commonly performed. Huh? Mm. So these are the four options huh, that people have for localized prostate cancer. Localized prostate cancer. So important, huh? four, four, for localized disease. And not the spread one, huh? stage four, we're not talking about that. Today we're not talking about stage four. Huh? Okay, so then we talk about surgery first. Huh? Surgery first. You look at the diagram, just now we show already, man, huh? ah, you see, surgery eh, is to, you see, bladder above and, you know, the urethra below is to take out the prostate and the seminal vesicle. Ah, take the whole, the, the, the blue dot there. Da, 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 da. Ah, the art of the surgery is to take that out uh, with minimal side effect. So, there is a skill, skill involved. So, the technical uh, uh, dexterity, the skill uh, is important. To take that out. Huh? There's an art, not there's an art, surgical art. Huh? Then after they're taken out, you know, cannot leave the place empty, you know, cannot just leave it there, take out and then bye bye. Huh? Cannot. After you take that out, you cannot sambung balik. Huh? So they have to, you know, have to judge it, you know, and stitch. So the surgeon have to, the bladder here have to, you know, uh, bring it down and stitch to the remaining urethra. Have to stitch and stitch. There's no stapler, no stapler. One day, if someone invent a stapler, then life will be easier. Lah. You cannot stapler. 
so they are do you know uh, painstaking they are taking to to, to uh, uh, stitch it back or oh, that become another art you take it out there's one art already there's one technical skill you judge it by it, you stitch it back there's another technical skill so these are all quite technically demanding you know one of the more technically demanding uh, urological surgery now, of course there are many complex urological surgery huh? uh, this is one of them this is one of them of course uh, now a lot of people promote the robot, la, huh? the robot, no? the robot. later we'll talk about that huh? uh, but of course uh, not to forget uh, actually there are three main ways uh, three main way to take out the prostate one uh, this art of removing the prostate uh, uh, this art of removing the prostate, aiming for cure, uh, aiming for cure, uh, aiming for cure. And uh, the success rate will be normally quote about 70%, not 70 about that. And some people, even after surgery, also the disease come back. Uh, so traditional is open surgery. Open surgery meaning the traditional uh, incision about you know five, six centimeters in the lower abdomen, and go into the abdominal uh, cavity and take out the prostate and join back. Uh, uh, and then the next one will be laparoscopy, keyhole also, you know, same like robot one, keyhole one, keyhole, huh? or keyhole uh, to, to, to take out the prostate and stitch it back, huh? laparoscopic. Huh? Next one is robotic, huh? robotic, uh, the keyhole, also keyhole surgery, but they use the robotic arm lah, uh, uh, to, 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 to maneuver the, uh, the uh, surgical uh, 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 steps, uh, uh, to do the surgical step. Mm -hmm. Huh? It's important to know that this is uh, controlled by human one. Uh. So the human is important, you know. That, that human is important. We always say that the, 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 the green shirt, the you know, scrub shirt, the uh, uh, person, uh, that is important. Uh, because the robot itself cannot do anything. But it's not the keyword. Uh. That robot is not automated one, you know. There's no one button uh, uh, that myself can just click. Uh, or Dr. Muradi just go to the theater, just click the button. Uh, uh, the robot do by itself. Uh, that's called automated. It's not automated one. This thing uh, is controlled by whoever controls it. So uh, the, 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 the skill of the surgeon is still important. Mm -hmm. Because for a lot of people, a lot of good surgeons, uh, they, they can do very well with open surgery also. You know? They are, you know. They are. Of course, you cannot name people here like, in this public forum. I know a few people, huh? oh, the, 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 the surgeon, uh, they do open also, uh, nothing less than the robot one. They are, they are such people. And there are such people who can do laparoscopic, uh, the keyhole one, uh, with nothing less uh, uh, good uh, than robotic or whatsoever. Uh, there are such people. Uh, so it's a more technical skill. Mm, you'll come to that again. Uh, but that's for your knowledge. That's open. Uh, that's laparoscopic. That's robotic. There are people who can do the job well. Uh, uh, some people do very well with open. Uh, some laparoscopic. Some robotic. Uh, so that's a key point that we learn. Uh, radical prostatectomy. Yeah? Removing the prostate and joining the bladder back to the Jewish. Uh, this is the whole thing about surgery. Huh? I hope I we, we get the message clear today. Huh? So all of you will be expert. Lah, huh? uh, when your friend asks you about that, you will be able to explain that. Huh? Mm. Of course, uh, there's a with this one, of course, we hope uh, the aim uh, to, is to cure the cancer. Aim is to cure the cancer. Huh? Aim is to cure. Huh? But what the potential long-term side potential like, side effect is uh, uh, two main things. Uh, uh, urinary incontinence. Uh, if the sphincter like we, we illustrated just now, uh, if the sphincter function is not strong after surgery, there might be incontinence. That's more one of the most uh, worrisome, uh, troublesome uh, adverse event uh, from the surgery. Next one is erectile dysfunction, uh, uh, poor erection uh, because the nerve go through the side of the prostate and, and could be inevitably uh, injured uh, during the surgery. So to two main thing, two main thing, urinary incontinence that could happen, it won't happen in all patients. Yeah, uh, potentially could happen, and also uh, erectile dysfunction. Yeah, uh, just two things to remember. Huh? Well, next one for cure huh, is radiotherapy. Huh? Radiotherapy, external beam or brachy. Huh? So on the left hand side here, you have that break, uh, external beam, most commonly done. Huh? I think most center with oncology service they will have that. Huh? They will have this planning and all that. You know, tell you they will do a scan and calculate the dose. Huh? Oncology will calculate the dose. They will get the adequate dose lah, to really huh, clear all the cancer cell. Huh? They, they can do the calculation. And of course, on the right hand side, you have that brachytherapy. Lah. And uh, you know, uh, it's a bit different from surgery because uh, they will give some androgen deprivation therapy before radiotherapy. Uh, 
meaning they will give some you know, hormone in injection yeah, to, 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 to suppress the level of the testosterone, so to shrink the prostate. Uh, so the you know the radiation field can be you know can be controlled better yeah so they will string the prostate first with androgen deprivation therapy meaning suppressing the testosterone with an injection uh, make it smaller uh, then only they come with the radiotherapy uh, uh, so that is how it is done uh, how long the N uh, ADT depends on the oncologist uh? mm. okay so surgery or Radiotherapy, yeah, infocure, different infocure in, in uh, suitable patient, in appropriate uh, patient, and the patient understand and agree. These are the two that's aiming for cure. Success rate, like, I mean, they uh, depend on what series, what study people quote, could be, they could vary, but generally it's about people say, you know, localized disease, 70% about that. Uh, it's a rough figure, yeah. So we have to balance the side effect of each, you know, surgery got its own side effect, like we said, nah, urinary incontinence potential nah, to a certain percentage of patient, and then uh, uh, erectile dysfunction, certain percentage of patient, radiotherapy got its own side effect, nah, like uh, urinary symptom, urgency, frequency, some get, you know, a, a, a slow urinary flow because of stricture or so on. Nah, uh, they do get uh, diarrhea or, or, or you know, kind of a, a, a fecal urgency because could potentially could have side effects to the rectum at the back, yeah, and also could have a kind of what we said, you know, blood in the urine. Huh? Uh, also, they, they, they could also have uh, erectile dysfunction as well huh? after a few years, you see. Uh, so we had to balance the side effect, nah? uh, even for cure, but no, there's a certain side effect to see whether the patient can accept or not. Nah? Mm. Okay, so. It's so difficult to sometimes very difficult one you know, to decide. So many I mean, many years ago, uh, 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 we have uh, this uh, Malaysian clear, uh, uh, for men's health uh, clearing house uh, for men men's health. This is a Malaysian website. Uh, 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 uh. So we, we created you know a patient decision aid. Uh, you click inside there. There's this uh, 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 booklet uh, of different languages uh, to tell people uh, you have localized uh, prostate cancer. How do you decide among the four options? Uh, which one to choose? Which one to choose? Uh, so uh, it's available one. Uh, it's available. Uh, it's available. Uh, also, uh, we have the PDF. Uh, we need to later Dr. Mulali and the National Cancer Society Malaysia uh, can share with the patient. Uh, um, I can have it on my phone all the time. Uh, I just uh, any patient see me, I immediately I, I, I email to, to them straight away. Uh, uh, and I read it again. Eh, it's quite quite okay, I must say. <laughs> quite clear. Uh, so this is the first page. Uh. If you got that PDF, uh. last time we printed a lot of hard copy, but I mean nowadays people use the phone, use the computer, they can read away. This is a PDF, free of charge. You uh. can get that. That's the first page, first page of it. Making a this the choice, uh, meaning making a decision, uh. deciding what to do about early stage prostate cancer. Uh. I will take excerpt uh, from the book, uh, which is very clear, I must say, very clear. Yesterday I read again, it, it quite, quite clear. Uh. So uh, I highlight the key point to you. Uh, this is one of the page. I don't know which page is. Uh, how does your doctor classify your risk? Uh, depend on risk. Uh, your high risk, your low risk, uh, then only they can advise. Uh, because low risk patient, uh, patient have very low risk one. Uh, you know, it's not likely to grow or spread for many years, you know, 10 years or so. You know, not likely to affect them. Uh, they might as well carry on with the life. Uh, uh. There's this intermediate risk group. Uh, which is also you know, not likely to grow or spread for a few years. Uh, for a few years, uh, can drag on two, three years and wait and see. You know, yeah. huh? It's important the risk strat you call it risk stratification. Yeah, uh, stratification, those are the term the urologists use. Uh. And then high risk. Ah, uh, some cancer are high risk. Maybe the grade is higher or what? Uh. Uh, so they may be more angry. Yeah? But prostate can cancer got two types, like we see, you know, uh, a lot of the time, luckily they are they are they are, they are the they call that the pussy cat one. The pussy cat one just you know it's a cat. You know they won't hurt you too much. Yeah. Then there's this tiger one. You know we we'll eat us up. You know if we don't take uh, pay attention to it. Yeah. So pussy cat versus tiger. You know the cat family. Uh, pussy cat tiger. Yeah. So but luckily you know a lot of patients have pussy cat uh, kind of a cancer lah. But of course they are patients with tiger one that we need to act faster. Huh? So if patient have a high risk huh, in that red box there. Huh, High risk prostate cancer, it might grow or spread within a few years. So it's good that we take action fast. Huh? 
So I will look at the, I will highlight the box below on the next slide. Let's go, let's go. Okay, here we go, here we go. Yeah, uh, okay, we, we look carefully. Yeah. The low risk one, the low risk one. Uh, we look at the PSA and the glycine score yeah, and the T, the, the scan staging. Yeah. Uh, okay, we just go. Uh, low risk one, uh, the PSA normally will be low one, uh, less than 10, less than 10. Uh. Gleason score, uh, six, meaning three plus three uh, or below. Uh, uh, low, low, uh, the, the great little low, the best. Uh, Gleason score, uh, three plus three uh, or low volume or, or, or so on at uh, the C staging. Intermediate risk, uh, the PSA could be between 10 to 20. Oh, Gleason score of seven, either three plus four or four plus three. Yeah? And then uh, the, the, the uh, T staging will be higher, like, involving more tissue of the prostate by scanning. Yeah? Then the high risk group, the high risk group. Uh, then the high risk group, the PSA very high, huh? uh, 20. Uh, so we also worry. Huh? Uh, uh, and then the uh, Gleason score could be eight and more, eight, nine, or 10. Eight, nine, or 10. Huh? Uh, so you know, four plus four, four plus five, five plus four, decent score, or five plus five. Huh? Those are high grade. Huh? We have to pay attention. You cannot say a chin chai na never mind. Huh? Cannot, cannot, huh? cannot. We have to pay attention. The patient has to pay attention. The doctor has to pay attention also. Huh? Huh? We cannot say, oh, you cannot brush it out. Oh, never mind. Wait, 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 wait. Huh? Cannot. Huh? And then also the staging we have seen, uh, we have shown more involvement of the prostate. Huh? Even though no nothing come out, you know, everything is still in the prostate, but there are different risks. Huh? Low risk, intermediate risk, high risk. Uh, that is the job for the doctor to look at it and classify the patient to risk risk and then we advise accordingly. Okay, uh, risk stratification. Okay, so uh, of all the four options, now we just not talk surgery, radiotherapy, all that kind of thing, you know, for a uh, high risk, uh, you know, we better do something. How about observation? Uh, then come to one. Which patient of the main topic today? You know, you talk about watchful waiting. Oh, who, who, who can we do watchful waiting? Observation. Uh, observation uh, is a general term. Uh, at least the way or, 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 or watchful waiting. Uh. What do I need to know about observation? Uh, we zoom down to the key point. We zoom down. Now, now, now come to the main, main uh, you know, topic. Uh, main uh, gist of it for today's talk. Uh, who can we wait? And see number one okay observation can be used huh? this one I, I i snapped from that book one you know that i mentioned this pdf thing uh, i mentioned that one. I, I snapped from there it's actually very clear to me okay observation can be used for men with early stage cancer because cancer often grows so slowly yeah uh, some low low risk one uh, very slowly that it may not cause problem during a man's lifetime uh. Uh, so there are two types of uh monitoring one is that active surveillance. Uh, this one, uh, we wait, you know, but we didn't say we don't want to act, you know. We might act later on when things change. Uh, uh, so the work while they will look at the detail uh, of what is the meaning of active surveillance. Uh, uh, it's not watchful waiting, you know. This one, you don't need a close watching, keep checking, 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 you know. Mm. Okay, involve regular follow-up with examination and test. Uh, we examine the patient, we few months, we do the test and all that. So PSA testing, prostate examination will be done every few months, four months, three months, six months or so. Uh, Sometimes people repeat the biopsy again. Mm, after one year, two year, three year or so, uh, repeat biopsy, see whether the glycine grade, uh, the grade from low grade become high grade. Uh, they will check on that. The option of active treatment, uh, such as surgery or radiotherapy is still an option. The cut we still keep one, you know. That cut we still keep one. Anything change, PSA go up, the grade go up, whatever, we will play the cut. We will just say, okay, we go for surgery. Okay, we will go radiotherapy. Huh? It's still there one. We did not discard those options huh, for cure. Huh? So you know it, it might be right for the patient with uh, you know, who can choose it with small tumor, huh? very low grade, you know. We 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 doesn't appear to be uh, able to spread on uh, the low decent score uh, the three plus three very low psa uh, uh, this might be the one uh, who we can wait for a while uh, and then we surveillance them we follow them up uh, it's called active surveillance quite specific term uh, they will use this term active surveillance uh, uh. next one is the watchful waiting how is the topic uh, the title of the talk today uh, you know ah uh, this one is different one this is different uh, this is different. Uh, all the surgery, radiotherapy, they, they are not in the cut. They are not. You know, we, 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 we just throw the cut aside and then we don't want to, to, to see them. We don't want to see them. 
Huh? Why do we do that? Why do we do that? You know, it involves less frequent follow up on this one huh? and examination than active surveillance. Huh? We, we will see as necessary and all that. This only uh, they're, they're done uh, if the concern that the, uh, you know uh, we will do something uh, if the we think uh, the you know on follow up the thing have progressed very fast uh, uh, you know, something have changed but then only we might want to act uh, uh, it will be right for the patient who are very old you know, very old you know very frail have other health problem uh, heart problem and all that kind of thing which is more serious you know actually the all the other medical conditions some are quite serious uh, uh, so you know the, the patient with a life expectancy of less than ten years or so. Uh, Sometimes you know, people don't, don't disturb them. No? Uh, okay, so this is a uh, watchful waiting. So what the advantage? Uh, observation meaning either watchful waiting of uh, or, or, or uh, uh, surveillance, uh, active surveillance. What the advantage and disadvantages? We look at it now. Nah? Important to do. This is a snapshot from that book. Right? Quite good actually. Okay, advantage. Uh, you can avoid the complication of you know surgery or radiotherapy, you know, uh, trouble controlling bowel, bladder, or that kind of thing, infection issue and all that. Uh, of course, you can change your mind also. Huh? Uh, it's not cast in stone. Uh, you want to change your mind, you can. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it, it could be uh, cheaper la, at that short term la, compared to radiation and surgery. Eh? Uh, it could be more costly in long term. Eh? Uh, okay. Uh, next one. Uh, okay. What are the disadvantages? Huh? Disadvantages, uh, okay. You might be worried, lah, uh, thinking that there some people uh, okay, some people not 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 so okay. But they they, uh, they, are, they are very worried. Huh? Uh, you know, you, you need close follow up, so you have to keep in mind that you need to go back every three months, six months, or so on. Huh? Uh, cannot forget one, you know. They forget that they're very headache already. Uh, you know, need to go for regular blood test. Some people will, you know, uh, need more biopsy if it's active surveillance. Huh? Of course, there's this little risk uh, that you know it, it might uh might spread lah, uh, uh, that become harder to treat in the future. Uh. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, the treatment option. Uh, the main topic here: watchful waiting, active surveillance. Uh, well, who is suitable for that? Uh, the patient is low low risk, uh, uh, small risk of spreading and or, or slow growing. Uh, uh, confined to the prostate. Uh, people. Uh, uh, very old eh? and then uh, maybe serious medical problem and then uh, you know, patient can accept you know there's cancer there but I, 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 I'm okay to leave with it eh? and uh, you're able to follow up lah, eh? able to turn up to the hospital and follow the regular monitoring eh? and uh, for surgery those are younger than 70 there's a general guide lah, of course you know there's uh, not a cast in stone you know? uh, good health uh, one some people want it out yeah, uh, some people choose to take it out. So uh, you know, you want to remove it, you go for surgery. Huh? You can accept the side effect from surgery, huh? potential urinary incontinence, erectile dysfunction, and uh, you also can accept it. Uh, sometimes after surgery, some cancer cell uh, remain around the pelvic area, one, you know? and you can accept. Okay, if that happened, huh, if the PSA is still high, then accept radiotherapy huh? to add on. They call it add on. Huh? Add on uh, radiotherapy, yeah, you can uh, accept that. Nah? You can accept that, that's fine. Yeah. And then let me see a uh, bit uh, Okay. And then if radiotherapy, uh, radiotherapy, uh, you know, uh, any age, yeah, young, old can can uh, uh, you have serious uh, health problems. Nah, people cannot undergo surgery because of health issue. Lah, huh? So they might want to, but they want cure, then you can have radiotherapy. Huh? And uh, you're able to go to the, you know, the, the oncology center five times a week, you know, up to some time, depend on calculation, some go four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks or so. Uh, they will calculate the dose for you. Huh? And, uh, okay. Mm. Of course, high risk disease, huh? and if thing unable to cure, this for higher risk. Huh? So these are the options. Huh? So, uh, okay. So th these are the general, general, uh, 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 concept yeah now uh we know uh, up to now uh, you will know that you know how the doctor diagnosed prostate cancer and uh, you will know uh, how to stage them yeah localized cancer locally advanced metastatic and today we talk about localized and there are four options and above are the main gist they are the main gist huh, of the uh topic really you know so if you know until that that will be the main thing really then you are already the expert. You already can advise your friend, you know, like now 12 o'clock, like, 
12 o'clock today, 27th of November, you are already the expert. Okay, so the next few segment, uh, 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 Dr. Murali, maybe I, I, I just finished this few slide. Okay, yeah. If you need to stop me, you stop me. Yeah? Uh, so I, I will just go a bit deeper. Uh, this is not a bit deeper already. The tech, very technical, a bit technical already. Uh, very technical, but that, that shows the evidence. Uh, evidence, this technical part. Uh, the urologist, uh, you use the guideline, man. Uh, it's called European Guideline, EAU, uh, European Association of Urology Guideline. Uh, they will refer to that. Uh. In that guideline, uh, I, I took a snapshot from the guideline. Uh. Okay, so uh, they call it deferred treatment. Uh, the one we mentioned just now, uh, uh, monitoring. Deferred treatment, two types is there in the official, this kind of technical guideline. Active surveillance and watchful waiting. Yeah. In, lo in localized disease, a life expectancy of at least 10 years is considered mandatory for any benefit. Uh, from uh, definitive uh, treatment. And you want to do surgery, radiotherapy, uh, you know, so, so, so make sure the patient has a uh, good life expectancy. Uh, uh, okay. And then also, what is it? Now, comorbidity, yeah? all the heart problem, kidney problem, and all the kind of uh, you know, diabetes, hypertension, and all that. It's more important uh, than age uh, in predicting life expectancy. So we have to take all into consideration. Uh? Some people could be quite fit yeah, when they are old. Yeah? So we take the, the, the comorbidity into uh, consideration. Uh, this is a summary uh, uh, table uh, of the uh, active surveillance versus uh, watchful uh, waiting. Yeah, treatment. Uh, okay, treatment, active surveillance is still aimed to cure one, you know. You know, one day you uh, can change plan, uh, surgery will then watchful waiting is palliative one if we don't actually aim to cure. Yeah, uh, yeah. and then follow up. Active surveillance, there's a predefined pre schedule where every three months or so must do the blood test one, you know. Huh? And then wash your waiting, very, very flexible one. Huh? Uh, whenever you need to do, do. Uh, okay. Assessment marker, huh? quite fixed one uh, for active surveillance. Must do a rectal examination, uh, blood test, PSA, uh, some scanning, some repeat biopsy, you need to be there. Uh, huh? Wash your waiting, nothing cast in stone one. Uh, depend on the symptom, depend on the doctor, depend on the patient. Huh? Uh, active surveillance is for patient with uh, life expectancy more than 10 years one, huh? and for patient with uh, life expectancy less than 10 years, well, maybe we should go for watchful waiting. Huh? Mm. The aim, uh, the objective of it, hmm? active surveillance uh, to minimize treatment related toxicity without compromising on the survivor. Huh? We aim that they will survive the, survive the same. Uh, compared to patient with surgery or with therapy. Uh, we just want to delay the side effect. Don't attack so fast. Just wait. Uh, watchful waiting is uh, also uh, minimize the treatment related toxicity. Uh, uh, you want to treat them too early. Uh, uh, and uh, command uh, uh, is for active surveillance for low risk. Uh, the keyword low risk, you know, this is another keyword. We repeated many times already. Low risk patient, uh, uh, of course, watchful waiting at any stage you can say, no, I don't do anything too quick. Uh, so these are the active surveillance study, you know, uh, active surveillance in screen detected, uh, meaning do PSA screening and detected prostate cancer with low risk and they watch. Uh, and you can show what uh, there are many studies on that, uh, many studies on that. The 10 years survival, very good one, you know. Oh, mostly uh, above, 90%, uh, 85, 90% uh, above. And the cancer specific survival, uh, 98 and above one. Uh, so hardly one two percent people die from the cancer itself huh? for this low risk patient uh, who are being surveillance uh, undergoing surveillance. Huh? Of course, the most famous person is this one, Cross, uh, from uh, Canada, from Toronto, uh, from Toronto, Lawrence uh, Cross. Uh, he's the most famous one uh, from Sunny Pro. Uh, uh, he's the proponent uh, of a patient with low risk. Uh, you just active surveillance them. Don't attack so fast. Uh, Lawrence Cross. Uh, that's Lawrence Cross. Uh, he's still around. Uh, that's me, la, yeah. met him I think, two years ago, before pandemic. Mm. Okay, then other study. La, uh, this, one, the one, uh, this one is the, you know, in the pre-PSA. PSA is quite new, you know, last 20 years, 30 years or so. Uh, uh. Before that, uh, there's no PSA test on it. Old days. Uh. So there's this study in Scandinavia. Uh, Scandinavia study, mainly in Sweden. Uh. Scandinavia study got very good data collection one. So uh, they, 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 they are studying, they publish in the New England Journal of Medicine, uh, the most uh, well 
respected journal uh, in medicine. This is the fourth time they publish. I think third time or fourth time they publish. Radical prostatectomy or watchful waiting. Compare these two, you know, in prostate cancer. They follow up for 29 years. 29 years. Uh, uh, Bill at Selson, uh, famous one. Uh, published uh, three years ago, 2018, before the COVID. Yeah. So uh, the, they have 695 patients. Uh, two groups only. One group go surgery. One group go watchful waiting. Don't do anything. But this is the pre-PSA, very old era one. Uh, this one somehow shows some advantage la, uh, if you do surgery early. La, uh, do surgery early because the overall mortality, we see uh, the overall mortality is lower la, if the patient has surgery uh, compared to watchful uh, waiting. There's a little advantage there. Uh, so this is the Scandinavia uh, study uh, compared surgery and watchful waiting. Next, that is the early PSA era. Then PSA start to come with it. Uh, to do testing. No, we are people, oh, in America, they go, oh, do PSA, do PSA, do PSA. Uh, then come the pivot study. This is the American study, you know, in the United States of America. Uh, it's called pivot, uh, the short form of it. Uh. Follow up uh, of patient, uh, prostatectomy versus observation. Uh, think what you uh, compare this to. So what does it show? 731 patients. Uh, uh, two group. Uh, surgery versus observation. Follow up. 12 years, huh? 12 years for the So they, they show very, very tiny advantage of, of uh, radical of surgery. Huh? No, no big advantage. Huh? Uh, uh, all cause of death, huh? uh, if you have surgery, 68%, slightly lower than observation, 73%, but the hazard rate ratio only that there is kind of risk calculation 0.95. Huh? So, so only, uh, meaning these two, uh, the gut, the gut, uh, no big advantage of one to another. Huh? The, the benefit may be uh, in the intermediate risk group. Lah. Intermediate risk group, maybe you do surgery, there's benefit. Huh? Uh, so in this, they call this the forest plot lah, to show intermediate risk group, there's benefit. Huh? Uh, and lastly, the third one, this is not quite famous, you know, because the quarter in our local newspaper, huh, Star, you know, when it was published in 2016, huh, this one published. This is a UK study huh, uh, by MD, yeah, MD yeah, uh, Freddie MD of uh, United Kingdom, yeah, published in New England Journal of Medicine as well. 10 year follow up, 10 year outcome huh, after monitoring surgery or radiotherapy for localized prostate cancer. Huh? So, published in, uh, quoted in Star and have a write up on, on, on that. And we wrote a, a kind of a <laughs> re rebuttal to that. Uh, 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 newspaper reporting also at that time. Protect is called protect. Yeah. They got 1,600 patients uh, from that thing. Uh, uh, from, uh, but mostly a very low risk patient one, you know, low risk patient. 56% low risk, 40% intermediate risk, there's hardly any high risk patient there one. 77% uh, 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 grade one one, you know, very low risk one, recent 3 plus 3. 76% uh, are all T1C, very low. Don't, don't worry, got two also, don't even have two one. Uh, uh, so they have three, uh, they want three, three arm, three arm. Active monitoring versus surgery versus radiotherapy. And the outcome, uh, you look at the outcome on uh, next one. What the issue? There you go. Prostate cancer specific mortality, there's no difference one, you know, no difference between anyone. Although you do active surveillance and uh, monitoring also, same, uh, surgery same, uh, radiotherapy same. So that is the main gist of that, that uh, study. You know? uh, uh, so uh, of course, lah, Patients have uh, surgery or radiotherapy, they have a lower incidence of disease progression and uh, lower incidence, uh, lower risk of the disease going to stage four. Uh, uh, those are the advantage, advantages. Uh, mm. So that is the main point. Uh. But however, uh, important to bear in mind, those this is specific for very low risk patient one. You know? That's why we wrote to the newspaper. But the newspaper, the star said, uh, the payah treat now. Uh, that's why. But not true one. You know? Some patients with higher risk, you need to treat. Uh, uh, so it's not so simple, uh, not so simple, uh, life is not so simple. Uh, so that's what we wrote the reporter, the star newspaper at that time, saying that this all low risk, you know, uh, higher risk, uh, higher risk patient, you need to treat. Uh, mm. So these are the survival curves uh, from the study, these are already uh, a technical thing. Uh, the uh, survival curve A above, uh, prostate cancer survival, you see all the three lines uh, merged together, one meaning no difference. Uh, uh, freedom for survival, uh, that is like uh, difference. Uh, uh, if the, the, the green bar is uh, just monitoring, so there's higher risk of getting disease progression. Uh, the, 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 there's some, some separation in the bar, the, the, uh, the curve. Uh, the above one are surgery and radiotherapy. You have less risk of uh, progression. 
So this is a summary uh, from the EAU guideline. Uh, inform patient uh, uh, that uh, based on uh, robust uh, uh, data, uh, uh, no active treatment model has been shown uh, to be superior uh, over active or any other active treatment option or defer active treatment in terms of overall uh, prostate cancer survival uh, or clinically localized. Uh, disease, uh, recommendation is strong. So depending on the patient risk profile, like low risk memang, you know, you, have, you can discuss about watchful waiting or active surveillance. Uh. So offer watchful waiting policy to asymptomatic patient uh, uh, with a life expectancy of less than 10 years uh, based on comorbidity or uh, other medical problem. Uh. Strong recommendation, strong. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, uh, inform patient that all active treatment have side effects. Uh, tell them what uh, is the side effect, that what is the side effect. Uh. And uh, uh, okay, uh, in, in patient uh, that you know, uh, if we go for surgery, like, like we mentioned just now, you know, that is you know, at the open laparoscopic like, robotic, or that have uh, you know, none of them have very clear superiority like, uh, against one to the another. Huh? Uh, so uh, it, it depends on the discussion with your doctor. Like, huh? mm. Uh, then come the very last part. Uh, we're coming to the summary slide soon. Uh, just uh, show four pictures uh, in terms of clarifying about surgery and we are urologists. Uh. Look at this picture. Uh, what, what does this picture tell us? This is a car factory. You know? Car factory you now they basically use all a robot one. Uh, you know, you know, no, 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 there's no this uh, mechanic to fix this thing and all that. They are all robotic one. All the big company are robotics one. You know, uh, Toyota, Volkswagen, and all that. It's all robotic. These robots, uh, they are automatic one. You press one button, uh, and today you fix the door. They will fix the door for you one. Uh. Today you put in the engine. They will put in the engine exactly where it is one. So the product of the car, no, that's quite standard one, quite standard one. But there's no, for a surgical robot, no matter how people promote the surgical robot, there's no one button that can press, today you fix the prostate, take it down, then you stitch it back, I go and have tea, and I come back after one hour. There's no such thing. one. The current robot that we have, they are not automated, one. they're not automated. It depends on the surgeon to control it. So they are not like the car factory one. They are not this robot. These are automated robots. We will give you consistent output. They are not. Huh? The current robot, no matter what, there's no robot automated in the whole world at the moment. At the moment. Not yet. Not yet. When will that come? We do not know. So the whatever robot it is, at the moment, we could say these are like lightsaber, you know. Uh, we were old enough, like, like myself, I'm already to know, to already look very young. You will look at this first generation of Jedi, like, 1976 or so on, uh, when we watched the first Star Wars movie. Yeah. So, uh, the, how good this saber is, uh, that they can kill people, can protect yourself, uh, uh, can uh, you know, defeat the Empire. Uh. It depends on how good that Jedi is you know, in using that lightsaber. The lightsaber itself is not automated one. He cannot do anything one. It depends on the Jedi you know, who go and you know, swing the lightsaber to achieve his purpose. No? Uh, so that is the principle. That lightsaber is not automated. Uh, that's how like the ro ro robot or whatever. Like, uh, that's how it is. Huh? So if the robot to come to someone who do not know how to use it or use it for wrong purpose, no point also. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, so it depends on it. It's, it's just a tool. It's a tool. Huh? Huh? Whether one day we can reach a stage huh, where we can the robot automated and behave like this one, huh? that one that day will come. Huh? Maybe in the future, we don't know, you know. You can come with AI and all that kind of thing. Huh? We do not know. Huh? That day, we do not know when they will come. Huh? So in summary, we come to summary. Huh? Summary. Huh? It's already one hour, uh, you know, 12 minutes already. Huh? Watchful waiting, yeah, watchful waiting, uh, patient with life expectancy less than 10 years, the comorbidity, we don't want to trouble them too much. Huh? They focus on their heart, focus on their diabetes and all that. Make sure they have quality of life. Huh? Mm. This especially pertinent huh, to patient with localized disease, huh? uh, which might not trouble them you know, for the next many, many years. Mm -hmm. Next one, active surveillance. Uh, this could be applied to any patient, especially the younger one who do not want the side effect of treatment yet, yet. So we monitor them, we watch them, we watch them closely. Yeah? And we could act later on. Yeah? That's called active surveillance. Yeah? And uh, definitive treatment, of course, uh, we go in for cure. Uh, uh, 
okay, uh, that's uh, RP is radical prostatectomy, lah, which is surgery lah, or radiotherapy, that will wait against the benefit and the side effect. It's a discussion between the doctors and the patient. And of course, all the dishes, decision above, uh, watchful waiting, girl, active surveillance, definitive uh, thing uh, for localized cancer. Everything is shared decision making. Uh. Uh, no one could tell you, you know, Mr. Who, uh, uh, who, uh, you, you, you better do it this one. You cannot. Uh, you will have to discuss uh, uh, for that. Uh. That's why the decision aid and so on uh, uh, will be helpful. Uh. Uh, so with that, I thank you for your attention. Yeah. So I will stop my sharing here uh, and I will hand the uh, uh, stage uh, back to Dr. Murali. Uh. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks so much, Prof. That was uh, really uh, such an interesting uh, sharing. And I hope uh, our colleagues here really managed to get some good insights. Uh, Prof, a couple of questions popping up, ladies and gentlemen. Also, uh, just if you have any more questions, please feel free to kind of drop them onto the chat box so that Prof will be able to kind of look at them and answer them as well. Prof, I think two questions which just popped up already uh, is pertaining to prostatitis, Prof. Mm. First question is, uh, can prostatitis cause the PSA to be raised up? Mm. Uh, and second is, can chronic prostatitis actually increase the incidence of uh, prostate, prostate cancer? Okay, there's a pertinent question. Huh? Prostatitis, there are two types, acute one and the chronic one. Huh? Uh, acute one will be very quite sick, like, very painful and all that kind of thing, you know, cannot pass you in and all that, that need immediate antibiotics and so on. Chronic prostatitis is a very long-term thing, they get a kind of nagging pain in the perineum and all that and uh, have a pelvic pain. Huh? So whether that cause cancer or not, uh, the simple answer, simple, like, because if the simple answer is no, like, at the moment we, 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 we think there's none. No, uh, it should not cause. Uh, what should it cause? You know, uh, so it should not cause uh, 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 prostate cancer. Should not. But of course, they are now. Of course, they are ongoing. You know, there's any new information come out, there could be small association and all that. You know, that is not very sure. Uh, uh, but if if ever gone, uh, the association will be very weak, uh, very weak. Uh, so uh, uh, don't. Uh, but of course, the patient will be followed up by the urologist. Uh, they will monitor the PSA examination and make sure there's not, nothing sinister there. Uh, so that is a more uh, complex way to look at it. Uh, uh. Of course, I saw a question there whether it could who's cause raise PSA can uh, prostatitis is an infection. Uh. For example, especially this uh, acute prostatitis, you know, the PSA can be high one. Uh. Got it, Prof. Uh, Prof, there's another question on, uh, B. okay, if I have a patient who's already been diagnosed with benign prostate hyperplasia, yes. um, uh, and I am already treating that uh, individual, what are the kind of uh, concerns I have when I see him uh, regularly about uh, prostate cancer. Can it progress to prostate cancer? Mm, mm, mm. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, I'm sure uh, this benign prostatic hyperplasia, PPH, uh, causing urinary problem, uh, can be treated by any doctor. In fact, anyone can treat. Anyone can get treat. Uh. So if you have started uh, treatment on, on a patient or you are a patient getting the treatment, so on follow-up, uh, what should you be aware of? What should you be aware of? Uh? Okay, two things. Two things. Number one, whether the medicine is helping with the urinary symptoms or not. Lah. If you're peeing well and all that with the medicine, then carry on. It's very safe to carry on. Yeah, just carry on. Yeah. If the after the maximizing the, the medicine, it still got problem passing urine, then you refer to urologist, maybe need surgery or something. Lah. Uh, so that is symptom wise, symptom. Uh. Number two, uh, regarding the of course the more uh, uh, what is some uh, question uh, of whether got cancer or not? Whether got cancer or not? So this one, uh, two way, two way we look at it. Uh. Number one, of course, we do the PSA test. Uh. You can do a PSA test. Uh. A PSA test, you're worried about cancer. Uh. Of course, if possible, uh, do a digital rectal examination. If possible, uh, we won't make it like compulsory or so. You know, if you, uh, if you can, then do it. Uh. If not, refer to urology to get that done. But the PSA, everybody can do. Uh, uh, you see whether there's a high risk of uh, getting uh, any risk uh, of getting prostate cancer. Of course, interpretation of PSA, uh, uh, we, if we go for that course uh, that we have, uh, the one teach you how to manage the PSA, that would be very uh, helpful. Uh, number one. Number two, there's also one caveat one, you know, uh, I'm being careful. If the patient is on medicine, the 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, uh, if they are on the medicine uh, to string the prostate one, uh, there are two of them. Either finasteride 
or do test right. Luckily, only two. Lah. In the market, only two only. Either branded or generic or one. Lah. There are two. They are under the class of five alpha reductase inhibitor, either finasteride or to tesseride. If you take this medicine uh, for more than six months, uh, more than six months, uh, long enough, uh, the PSA will drop by half on you. Know? So, for example, where a patient, a PSA is originally four, say four. Lah. If you take the, these two medicines, either one of them, for six months or beyond, then the PSA uh, from four, uh, it will reduce 50% and become two. <laughs> it will become two. So to do the calculation, you have to like, you know, the value times two, you know, so if the PSA is two, you have to times two. So the actual value should be two times two, four. Uh, that, that's this little caveat there. Okay, Prof. Prof, there's a question on what method do you use for prostate biopsy currently? Trust or transperineal prostate biopsy? Uh, uh, uh. This one depends on hospital to hospital. Lah, huh? Nothing wrong with doing one over the other lah, huh? because all are covered uh, properly depending on the hospital set up. So our, our side, we do both. Lah, uh, depending on the patient profile, their preference and all that kind of thing. Yeah, we will do both. Lah. We can do both. Either one. Lah, you tak payah buat dua sekali. Kan? You do one. Lah, you, huh? Got it, Prof. Um, Prof, there's also another question on um, many uh, people are recommending now to do a multi-parametric MRI as a screening mechanism. Uh, mm. What are your thoughts on this? Mm. Okay. The, 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 the challenge, uh, we go straight to the challenge, challenge we, we, we face. Why? Uh, why we cannot give it to everyone? Uh, why myself, uh, Dr. Murali, uh, order aja lah, bagi aja, put one machine dekat apa tu, National Cancer Society, everybody <laughs> walk through your place, tank up and then go and scan. Why cannot we do that? Huh? Maybe we hope maybe we can do that. The thing is cost. Expensive, you know, the, the, the scan, I think about cheap, cheap also 2000 plus. Yeah? So it, it, it's an expensive tool. It's an expensive tool. Huh? Uh, so there's this cost benefit calculation, you know. You know, uh, you know so when things become very expensive, the cost is an important factor in health healthcare. Huh? Cannot discount that one. Cannot, we cannot bankrupt the system. We cannot bankrupt the patient uh, by simply order this. Oh, do this, do this, do this, do this one expensive one good, like expensive one good. Cannot lah. Uh, cannot, cannot. Uh, uh, but MI got its role one, you know, in appropriate patient, there is a role one. Old days, uh, we will, old day example, uh, old day we will do a biopsy first, PSA race, uh, we do biopsy first. Then only we, after, after a few weeks, we do the MRI. These days, uh, if the facility is available and uh, uh, resources is available, financial uh, is okay, we would actually prefer to do MRI first one. You know? So the question, the person who asked the question is called correct one. You know, mean, meaning if, if available, uh, if okay, uh, uh, then we would prefer to do an MRI first. Why? Uh, why we do that? Two purposes. Number one, uh, it can tell us whether suspicious or not, number one. Number two, uh, if suspicious are uh, where the, the thing is, Ah, you know, your left side, uh, uh, apex, uh, right side. Uh. So when they biopsy, uh, they can they can target the area and the keyword target that area. So that there is benefit in that money. There's benefit in that. Uh. So uh, this one, uh, this is uh, comparing the benefit of doing this upfront and, and, and the cost of it, uh, and the cost of it. Uh. So it's uh, pertinent, not only to Malaysia, you know, even well-off country also, they also scratch their head, I know how to, how to sustain this. Uh. Right. What do Prof? Prof, this is, uh, this is from me and just to perhaps give a little bit more insight to some of our colleagues. If you could share with us a little bit about the multi-parametric MRI, how is it different than a, than a normal MRI? And, um, and you were saying also as well that it needs a facility so it's not very available widely, right? Why is this problem? Is it a special kind of machine? Does it need a special kind of radiologist to read it? Sorry. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, you, you actually given uh, the an answer in your question already. Good, thanks. Uh. Thanks for the tips. Uh. You are sweat. Uh, sweat uh. <laughs> you know, actually, uh, the answer is in the question already. Uh. If you everyone pay attention to Dr. Mulali's uh, question, uh, you know, uh, why is it so special? You know, why can't we do a CT or whatever? C CT very fast, man. Uh. CT very fast. Chop. CT, uh, five minutes, I think, can settle everything. Really. This MRI, uh, it got its challenge, you know? because why? Not only uh, you pay money, also you might not get it. You got long queue, uh, long queue to wait for that. Because it's got special machine, one. 
test with the, you know, the machine got Tesla one, you know, 1.5 Tesla, la, 3 Tesla, la, all that kind of thing. So ideally, it's a 3 Tesla machine, you know. Not all hospitals have that 3 Tesla machine, you know. So they need a special machine. Uh, that's an example, 3 Tesla machine. Huh? Because they will give the patient uh, uh, before die, give some die, different phases. Huh? They got different phases of uh, 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 MRI and see the characteristic of the blood flow and the image characteristic eh, of the uh, prostate, then they only they will give a report. So that scanning uh, go into that, they got tunnel, la, that tunnel, la, which is quite small, you know, quite small one. And then take that take uh, 45 minutes, uh, about 45 minutes, not quite long time, uh, stop there, oh, 45 minutes. So there's a problem of costro uh, for big also, you know, some people cannot, uh, cannot tahan one. Uh. You know, we, we understand that. Some people cannot tahan uh, an enclosed uh, uh, space one. Uh. They, they, they memang cannot. Uh, uh, so become a challenge. Uh. Uh, need a special machine. Long time in that tunnel. Uh, you can get claustrophobic and very noisy. You know, that they are all magnet. They got no radiation. Uh. It's not it's actually in terms of radiation, very safe. Uh. There's no radiation. They're all magnet. Big, huge magnet. And they are very noisy. They're very no uh, noisy. Uh. So that, that part. Then the last part, like uh, Dr. Muradi had mentioned, uh, you need people specially trained to read it on, you know. You know, they must know la, this uh, phase one, the, uh, this uh, uh, DWI and all that kind of uh, you know, T2 with the technical term. La, uh, and then give a pirate score to that. You, know, you cannot simply read also, right? That might as well don't do. Simply report. Uh, so the quality of the report also is important. So there are multiple components to the whole production chain. You know? So it's not so simple. Uh, you buy the machine, uh, it's so hard. <laughs> it's not enough to just buy the machine. You know? Got it. Got it. Thank you so much, Scott. Because uh, sometimes uh, yeah. some our colleagues, they feel, oh, look, we can just send for a pelvic MRI. It's yeah. equivalent or, you know, do a uh, pelvic uh, CT scan. But yeah. There are differences. Thanks, Prof. Yeah. Prof there's a, maybe... But of course, if the resource is available, why not? You know, I, I would say, lah, why not? Lah, if the resource is available. Uh, Prof, um, there's another question. I think this is from a colleague who's treating. Um, uh, the question is Is ADT adequate for a 75 year old with bone metastasis but no urinary symptoms? Mm, okay, uh, okay. That, that, that question, uh, uh, I will summarize. Uh, a patient with bone metastasis, uh, which is actually not in the topic today, but what could we will address that? Uh, that is classified under metastatic, you know, the earlier slide, uh, that one slide, uh, localized, locally advanced metastatic. So we are talking about metastatic already. Uh, this stage four, uh, stage four, uh, of course we say metastatic. Metastatic, uh, as we, um, during my training, during Murali, I think probably during your training also, uh, we say androgen deprivation therapy to cope already. Uh, you, you answer exam, you say, oh, the, the, the professor asks you, oh, patient stage four, huh? how do you treat? We say, oh, we give ADT, huh? we give hormone treatment. Now, sure, pass one, guarantee. Uh, pass oh, 51%, uh, sure, pass one. Nowadays, the problem, nowadays cannot pass. Huh? Cannot pass. You know, your, your professor asks the, uh, if, you know, if, if, if we ask the student, uh, the urologist trainee, lah, belum urology lagi, uh, hey, how you treat stage four? The fellow say, oh, ADT, cukup. Cannot pass, you know. Unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, uh, because why? Because ADT alone uh, in a fit patient uh, is no longer the standard of care. Uh, they, they, there's a term also, uh, then SOC, standard of care. Okay. It's not the standard of care anymore. Why? Why? Be because uh, they got new evidence, uh, level one evidence, showing that a ADT, uh, one component, you must plus one more agent one. Uh -huh. Then that is the standard of care because you're adding an extra agent. We will, we will name the agent. Actually, there are four agents at the moment, uh, up to 2021 now, uh, November 2021. There are four agents. Uh, you choose one. Uh, ADT plus chemotherapy, which is doxytaxel chemotherapy, or ADT plus uh, a, a drug called abiraterone uh, with a steroid prednisone, abiraterone, or uh, ADT plus uh enzalutamide, another hormone tablet, or ADT plus apalutamide. Uh, these are the drug names. Nah. You must choose one or two, if can, if can. Huh? Because why? Because why? If you have this ADT plus any one of these agents, uh, overall, uh, the patient uh, with this stage 4 disease uh, will survive longer. They will survive longer. They will have a longer lifespan. You know, they call it over technical term is overall survival. They have over long overall survival. 
And the magnitude of that increase uh, is very big one, you know, it's a very big one. Say, for example, old day, if you give ADT, say a patient in stage four survived three years, if you give this extra agent, uh, instead of you know, being alive uh, and able to you know, see the family all that for three years, they add one more year, roughly you know, 11 to 12 months of extra life to that patient. You know, add extra life, and you know, so they can do more things and see their grandchildren and all that kind of thing. It add kind of a survival period for them. So that is why ADT alone now, unfortunately, is not the standard of care. Standard of care for a patient with uh, appropriate la, you know, not every patient, you know, uh, okay, like like what you mentioned uh, the, in the question, uh, no symptom, quite okay, healthy person. Uh, if they can have one of the four there. Uh, Ah, their life will be prolonged uh, significantly. So that is the standard of care now, SOC. Uh, standard of care now is ADT plus an extra agent. Uh, so the exam answer, exam question is the same. How do you manage? But the question has changed, you know, from our time, you know, from 10 years ago, you know. So now the uh, uh, exam answer become very long already. Will do, will do. Ladies and gentlemen, um, uh, I mean, uh, keeping conscious uh, that time is... Uh, running for us as well and I'm, and I'm sure we, we've, we're very thankful to Prof for spending so much of time with us. I'm just going to see if there's any more questions. Okay. I think we've covered almost all the questions yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, if so, um, Prof, um, could I kindly ask you, you know, to leave us with uh, like some going, going away messages, some tips maybe for us to take home. Yeah. Especially a lot of our colleagues who are in primary care. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, thanks one for taking care of our patient. You know. <laughs> uh, with, with all this uh, uh, prostate awareness campaign and all that, uh, you know, I think more patients, uh, Malaysian patients, got two challenges. First is the you know the active uh, Movember la, and then the prostate awareness campaign, especially locally. Uh, uh, Dato, uh, no, 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 not Dato Suri anymore. Tan Suri, uh, Tan Suri Nazir Razak himself, uh, 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 from former CIMB. Uh, uh, he himself was affected by this localized prostate cancer. He himself had this topic that we are talking about. Uh, uh, Tan Sri Nazir Razak. He just got Tan Sri uh, two weeks ago from the king. Uh, uh, Tan Sri. Uh, he, he, got, he got surgery, uh, of course. And he is very enthusiastic in promoting uh, prostate cancer awareness and all that. So, uh, of course, with all this uh, 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 campaign and all that, more patients will see us, you know, see myself, see uh, 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 family medicine, general practitioner. So we have to be ready to uh, tackle this lah, and advise the patient accordingly. Huh? So there are many resources available, lah, including the that, that, that PCAT training module huh? uh, uh, being uh, uh, just launched, I think, a month ago. Lah, huh? uh, the part of the campaign. Lah, huh? uh, okay, that's number one. Number two, uh, even without campaign, I got the nobody bothers. Lah. The Malaysian population is getting older, you know, they're getting older. Huh? They're getting older. You know, it's an aging population. Our demographic, not pyramid anymore, you know. Not getting more like, you know, gemo, uh, in the tengah -tengah. Very soon, uh, you'll be an inverse pyramid where a lot of older population already, huh? like Japan, China, and all that kind of thing. So we have to prepare for that. Huh? They will ask us about, we have, a, we have more prostate problem. Huh? So these two are things that we should be aware, the trend, huh? awareness, huh? and also aging population. So it's important for us to know the basic. Huh? Uh, huh? If they come forward for more screening and all that kind of thing, we will face this problem, PSA, and all that kind of thing. Oh, I'm sure everybody will be able to advise accordingly. Uh, now that you know the framework of how to manage localized disease, though we are more confident you know, of telling people to uh, interpret the PSA. Otherwise, if we do not know what will be there in the treatment downstream, sometimes hard to tell you know, uh, how to do PSA and all that. Yeah. Absolutely. Prof, just uh, one last question. Yeah. Uh, would, it be able, would it be helpful to kind of point our colleagues towards uh, where they can get onto the PCAT training program? Uh, is there a website they can do or someone they can apply to? Ah, yes, yes, there will be a website. What I will do is that uh, I, I will get to the, 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 the uh, uh, Dr. Tio is the cha chairperson from our team. Maybe I, I share with you. Uh, uh, we can email out, Prof. I, I email to you. To then all the participants. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we, we can email we, out to all the participants. Yeah, yeah, we, 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 will, we will go through Dr. Murali. Uh, no problem. Yes. Thanks so much. Okay, that, that will be helpful for everyone. Thank you so much, Prof. Thank once you. again, it was a wonderful session. And uh, we're wishing everyone uh, 
as we, I mean, it's almost the end of November, but I think prostate awareness does not end. It needs yes. to continue towards the rest <laughs> of the year as well. Uh, and we'd like to wish everyone uh, a happy weekend for what, whatever's left of it. Thank you so 